Hey, what's going on guys? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today, we're going to be taking a look at a really awesome accessory for the Xbox Series S. Now, when it comes to console accessories, I'm not a huge fan of them. You know, I'd pick up a screen protector for the Switch, maybe a little bit of a carrying case. But when it comes to this new accessory for the Xbox Series S, this is something I've been looking forward to for a while now. What we have here is a 12.5 inch HDR FreeSync 1080p 60 hertz display that connects to the back of your Series S, making it extremely portable now. And I'm a big fan of the Series S. This is one of my favorites here that's been released. I haven't been able to get my hands on a PS5 and we do own an Xbox Series X, but this is the one I always have close to me in my office and I use this a lot more. So having a detachable screen is gonna be really awesome for the Series S. Now, like I mentioned, this is a 12.5 inch 1080p 60 hertz display. It does support HDR and FreeSync, and it should give us a pretty good picture. Now, G-Story also makes one for the Series X, which is a 4K monitor. It comes in a bit more expensive, but due to the form factor, I think the Series S version does make a lot more sense. So let's go ahead and get this out of the box. We're going to test it out and see what we can do with this thing. So first up, here's the accessories box. We do get a remote. They also include two AAA batteries. And we also get our 12 volt power supply, but this screen will run on five volts. And if you're familiar with USB power, USB is five volts, but on the unit itself, it says it requires 24 watts. Now, I believe that we could run this off the of USB power on the Series S, but it might not get as bright as if we were to plug it into wall power with the included adapter. And we will test that out by the end of the video, but here's the screen itself. Now, what we have here is that 1080p 12.5 inch screen along with stereo speakers built into this. So we've got sound and picture. We've also got two audio outputs, two HDMIs and our power in. So I was actually kind of expecting this to plug directly into the back of the Xbox Series S with the adapters kind of sticking out of it. But instead they opted for a short six inch HDMI cable. So let's go ahead and get this thing assembled. It's actually really simple to do. On the unit that I received, one of the side panels was already connected to the screen. I'm not sure if all of these are going to come like that. But basically what we're going to do is just attach it to the Series S. It's going to mount right on the side here. And we have the other bracket. So we'll just snap this in place. And it looks like I didn't snap it on the Xbox itself. So just kind of line it up, make sure everything's flush. There we go. So it kind of snaps in there. And now we just need to mount this other side bracket to the screen. Nothing's going to be screwed into the Xbox itself. These Phillips head screws are actually just mounting directly onto the screen bracket. And we'll just go ahead and put these in real quick. And there we have it. The screen is now mounted to the Series S. All we need to do is go ahead and plug in that HDMI cable. So yeah, around back here, we're just going to go to HDMI 1. And with this cable, I really wish one of these sides was a 90 degree. That way it would be a little bit cleaner. And you can always find these smaller 90 degree HDMI cables on Amazon, but it would have been nice to be included with the unit itself, just so it's not kind of sticking out of the back here. It would have just cleaned it up a lot better if it was like a four inch cable with a 90 on one end. So like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, the screen also needs power and they do include a 12 volt, 24 watt power supply, but this also says that it'll run on five volts. So first thing we're going to do is just plug it directly into the wall. And then we're going to see if we can run this directly from the USBs on the Series S. I think we're going to be able to. And real quick, I just wanted to show you that everything on the Series S is still accessible, even that expansion card slot and Ethernet. All right, so I've got everything plugged in. Let's go ahead and power this up. I don't believe I need to turn the power on the monitor. I think it will detect it over HDMI. I think so. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so I didn't have to touch the power button or anything on the remote for the screen or even on the unit itself because up top here we do have our volume control, menu control, and power on and off. Plus those dual stereo speakers which actually sound way better than I thought they would. So the first thing I want to look at are the screen settings. I know there's a lot to this little monitor here and uh, from the top here we can always control it but I'm going to be using the remote. We can open up the OSD from here. So from here, we've got our backlight, our contrast. We can change the volume and the temperature. It's set to user right now. We can go to cool, warm, you know, the usual. This main setting here is the simple stuff. If we back out and go down to picture settings, there's a lot more that we can mess around with. So we'll move down here. We've got our backlight, contrast, sharpness, black level, DCR. We've also got our eco mode. Okay, eco, I guess, is kind of just preset game settings. So we can go to RTS, FPS, and things like that. I kind of like the way game is looking. We've also got low blue light, noise reduction, temperature, gamma, hue, saturation. We can mess with the six color. 
and image ratio. So we're at 16 by 9, but we can go to 4 by 3. From the sound section, we can adjust the treble, bass, balance, we can totally mute it. We can also adjust the volume from this section here. And down to general settings, this is where we can adjust all those extras like free sync, overdrive, HDR, auto power saving. I'll turn free sync on here. This will eliminate any kind of screen tearing with AMD cards. Uh, HDR is set to auto, but I don't think I have it enabled on the Xbox. But basically, we have all the controls we need to do a self-calibration, and everybody's going to be different. Uh, for me, I just turned it to game mode. I do have free sync on. I might turn it off. But for this video, I'm going to leave it just like it is, and later on, I can calibrate it to however I want. Okay, so let's go ahead and test out some games on this thing. I'm going to start with Forza Horizon 5. We'll just load right into some gameplay here. And yeah, so far so good. I've got this set up, so we're doing 1080p 60 with Forza Horizon 5, and I think it looks absolutely amazing for a 12.5 inch screen. Unfortunately, when I load it up into Forza, we're kind of in mid-morning, so it's going to be a bit darker in some areas, but this is definitely going to give you an idea. And this is not a calibrated display, plus you're watching it in a YouTube video. I also had to throw a fighting game in here. This is Injustice 2, and I think the colors look great even with HDR off. The only thing I changed here was turning it to game mode. I also went back and just turned Free Sync off, but that doesn't affect the coloration or the brightness of the display anyway. And finally here, since I already had it loaded up on the Xbox, Doom Eternal. Okay, so with everything we've seen so far, we've been running the monitor on wall power with the included adapter, but I really wanted to see if this would run over USB power. So what I have here is just a little cable I made. You can actually buy these on Amazon. It's USB on one end and a 2.5 millimeter barrel jack on the other. So we're just gonna plug it into one of the USB 3.0 ports on the Series S. Just give you a quick look here. So we're gonna be running the monitor and speakers on five volts. I think it's gonna work, but I don't think we're gonna be able to turn the brightness all the way up. And there might be a few other settings we can't use with five volts, but we do have power on the monitor over USB. So now I need to do a little bit of testing and see how well this works out. I kind of wish that this was the way it was set up out of the box because I don't like having two adapters for this whole setup. So far over USB, it's actually working really well, but I was able to get the monitor to shut off and it really comes down to the volume on this whole setup. So let me stop the car. We'll go into the menu. Backlight is at 100%, but as soon as I turn this volume up to around 70%, I can get the screen to cut off. I'm at 50%, but let's go ahead and take this up to around 70. And what's happening here is the built-in amp is just drawing a little more power than that USB can put out, causing the whole thing to shut down. And there it is. I didn't think it was going to do it that time, but it just kind of rebooted the monitor. Not the console, we're going to be in the exact same place. It's really just the screen. And if I turn the volume back down to 50% or under, it's good to go. I don't have any issues with it, and I still have that backlight set at 100%. So it really comes down to those built-in speakers just drawing a little more than the USB can put out. But if you had headphones on or keep it at or under 50%, you should be good to go over USB power. I'll leave a link in the description to a cable you can pick up on Amazon for pretty cheap. All right, the final thing I wanted to do here was make this whole thing portable by adding a battery bank. So what I have here is a RAV power battery bank. It's 7,000 milliamp hours when you're talking about five volts, but when you plug into the 120 up top here, you're only gonna get about 10,000 milliamp hours out of it. You can pull up to 250 watts out of this battery bank and the Xbox Series S running something like Horizon 5, 1080p, 60fps only pulls around 90 to 95 watts. So I'm not going to get that much runtime out of it, a little over 30 minutes, but I still wanted to see if we could make this all work. So the screen is running over USB from the Xbox and the Xbox is plugged directly into this battery bank. 
So the whole setup is now portable. We have a battery-powered Xbox Series S with a 12.5-inch 1080p display. But like I mentioned, we're not going to get that much runtime out of it. With the wattage that the Xbox Series S is pulling with this specific game, I'd say around 35 to 40 minutes out of this battery bank fully charged. But it's still pretty cool to see this whole thing being powered by a battery. So in the end, I really do like this G-Story screen for the Xbox Series S. There are a few things that I'd like to see changed here, like the clips on the side kind of clipping in a little better. As you can see, when it moves around on the table, it does get a little bit of a separation. Another thing I'd like to see him include is kind of a 90 degree HDMI cable. That way it's not sticking all the way out of the back. And a USB to 2.5 millimeter barrel jack. That way we can run it directly off of the USB power. And as long as people know you can't turn it up all the way, I think they would be good to go. But that's going to wrap it up for this video. I really appreciate you watching. If you're interested in learning more, maybe even picking one of these G-Story screens up for your Xbox Series S, link for that is in the description. I also used a few extra things in this video, like the battery bank and that USB to 2.5 millimeter barrel jack. I'll leave a link so you can pick one of those up if you're interested. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. And like always, thanks for watching.